close, Rowan. Molly Branch It's so hard to know 300 years It was so long ago It was so long ago Back through history we go Our past is a story like a river it flows. Hello, friendly camera. Say Hi. I'm me. We're doing Gary Rudd. She was a mock woman. Remember today for the part in history that Molly Brandt played. And history tells a story we'll try to understand. History that is built on indigenous land. Who is Molly Brand? Yeah. Oh guys, look at this. It's part of our school. It's huge. Does someone paint this? Uh, yeah. Who is Molly Brand? Mr. Pottery. It's the part hero. Of our look how big it is. She is part of. Sing this part. We're part of this school. We're part of this school. We are Molly Brand. We are Molly Brand. We're part of the school. So as it turned out, while I was there, the artist, the artist who did the mural, was there. He was working on the mural, and his name is Shane Goudreau. And Shane is his name. And uh, so I walked up to Shane, and first of all, I said. That mural is awesome. That mural is amazing because he did it with spray paint. He used spray paint cans to do an image of such beautiful, fine detail that I, could, I couldn't believe my eyes. A lot of my mural work and that sort of thing I do has to, a lot to do with, with, uh, with where I was born and raised or you know, some, some sort of uh, historical uh, meaning behind it. And I thought, well, being that this was the area that, uh, one of the areas that she last lived, um, I thought that that uh, would be a great idea, as well as, as someone who, who hasn't really been um, very well exposed in history uh, for, for the, the, the positive uh, things that she's done and the, the only difficult part was is that there wasn't any real pictures of, of Molly. The only thing that exists uh, to my knowledge at this point uh, was the sculpture that uh, resides just uh, be behind this wall here uh, of her face. So I, uh, I knew very little about Molly Brandt and I still don't really know very much about Molly Brandt but I thought it would be a really kind of a neat project um, to explore Molly Brandt and in fact what I thought uh, that what I would like to try to do uh, with myself and with, with Dave, who's, um, who's filming for us, I thought it would be really fun for us to go down to the mural, to go down to the park as a group, our class, and uh, Dave would come and we'd invite some other guests to come with us, uh, some guests who know a lot more about Molly Brent than we do. And we would just try to make um, a little documentary. And does anyone here? Uh, how many people have heard the word documentary before? Thanks for your patience, everyone. This is what it's like in Hollywood. <laughs> a lot of waiting. So that's kind of what we're thinking of doing, is, uh, is creating a little documentary. What we also want to do is, if a documentary tells a story with information, 
part of the really important part of the documentary about Molly Brandt is actually about Molly Brandt Elementary. It's like, how did this school come to be? Well, we know the, the big story is that two schools became one school. And First Avenue and Frontenac both became Molly Brandt Elementary. So what's that story all about? So we're, we're good to go? Almost. Okay. So, have you ever watched those entertainment shows in Hollywood where they, they interview the actors to ask them how the movie was? Have you ever yeah, seen one of those? Yeah, I've seen one. That's what it's going to be like. You're an actor and, and I'm, your, I'm the Hollywood guy interviewing you, so. Okay. But no smiling, okay, and no laughing. Okay, those are the two rules. That, that's not a fair rule. I'm not talking, though. <laughs> no, you're not talking. I know. You can. You can talk if you want. Because like, what if I ask you another question? You, you can't stay silent. When, you, when did you first hear that Frontenac School was going to close? Do you remember? Like, you know, you're uh, young. In like just when um, the grade three started, we heard that it was about to close. Okay. And how did you feel about when you heard that your school was closing? What kind of news uh, was that for you? It was pretty worrying because I had no idea where we were going to go until right. I heard that Molly Brandt was going to be built. Okay. So when you pictured Molly Brandt, did it look like this in your mind when you were in grade three? Not at all. What did you picture? Do you remember that, uh, that far? What it might building be like? about the size of Frontenac. Okay, so it's just bigger than what you expected? Yeah, I didn't okay. think there were going to be the rooms in between right. the classes. And okay, and um, do you still have the same sort of friends from Frontenac yeah. that you have now at Molly Brandt? Yeah. Have you made new friends at Molly Brandt from First yes. Avenue people? Okay. Um, and uh, question, uh, do, how about you, Sabrina? Do you have, did you have some of the same friends from First Avenue? Yes. And do you have new friends from who were Frontenac? Yes. So question for both of you. Do you still think of yourself as First Avenue and Frontenac students, or do you think of yourself as Molly Brandt students? Uh, I, pick, I still think I'm Frontenac, but like Molly Brandt too, so like in okay. between. So this is your second year at Molly Brandt? So you're still yeah. getting used to it? How yeah. You? Do you think of yourself as a Molly Brandt student or a First Avenue student? A Molly Brandt student. Okay, interesting. We might also want to talk to um, some Indigenous people because Molly Brandt was an Indigenous woman. And we would like to talk to some Indigenous people to find out what they know and understand about Molly Brandt. So I just, I just met Kate Brandt who tells me that she found out recently that she is a descendant of Molly Brandt. Gumochi, Sayani, Bigona, Wadonti. So she had a great task to perform because she lived in both worlds. Having married a non native person, right. she had to live in both those worlds. So she was one of the first women to create that big relationship that was going to start although women weren't recognized so much then, but you can see it now when you look back, okay. how important that was for, for Canada. Um, what I did, uh, and I, I did this last week, is after I saw the mural, and I thought, okay, Gary, you're coming to Molly Brandt Elementary, and you're going to be visiting this classroom, Mr. Mr. Pottery's classroom. You don't know the students. You've probably met them before, and they might know you, uh, and we're gonna talk about Molly Brandt. So we tell them what you know about Molly Brandt. Well, here's what I know about Molly Brandt. Not much. So I wrote, who was Molly Brandt? That was my question to help me start the song. And um, here's what happens. I started to write down, I wrote, who was Molly Brandt? And I answered, it's so hard to know. Who was Molly Brandt? It was so long ago. How many years ago was it? 300 years ago. If you listen, there is going to be an underlying rhythm or bass rhythm that you're going to use. When we use drums, it helps provide that bass rhythm. And then other things can come in with it, like a guitar or a flute or any other musical instruments, and they can add to it. So music is a universal language. And that's why when we do drumming and we sing, we consider it a form of prayer. Because we're using the, the breath of life that the Creator gave us to rejoice. And so it goes to the Creator and He hears it as a prayer. 
Well, I think in terms of the the music, especially, right? And um, you know, I've, unfortunately, I feel like as students get older and, and as they mature, sometimes their interest in song and um, and and music dwindles a little bit, and maybe they're too cool for right. um, you know. Uh, you know, singing in the classroom the and stuff like blues. that. Yeah, for the name Rhyming Blues, right. exactly. Right. But as, you know, as we just noticed, it's not true, it's right? And the adults cool. jump in and, you know, it gives me an opportunity to model that because I, you know, love singing songs and love participating in that kind of stuff. Right. And I feel like, um, you know, from the very beginning, if we think back, I mean, there's, things have changed a lot, right? They were definitely a little bit, uh, a little bit shy about uh, opening up and, and getting into the music. But right. towards the end, they were all over it and really yeah. got. A, I feel like got a lot out of the music side of things, especially, but also through the you know the conversation that we had around right. you know our school's namesake, Molly. Right. Brand. Yeah. So okay. Really appreciate that. Great. Thank you. Oh, thank and you thank here. goodness Ash was here. You know, that's yeah. that's the main She's thing. She's pretty awesome. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thank so you. Thank you. this is really special for us because we're one, if not the only school in the Lionstone District School Board that's named after a woman. And she wasn't just a woman, she was an indigenous person. How many schools do you think are named after indigenous women? We could be like one of two schools with a female indigenous name. In Canada. <laughs> so you guys are part of history. You can say, I was one of the first students at this school that was named after a famous indigenous woman. Okay, good. So, so quiet on the set now. Ready? Here we go. So, take two. I think this project is the start of a bigger conversation. Mm. I think it's the start of a conversation around the importance of the Indigenous story in our community and also the importance of naming a school, something like Molly Brand, and what that means for kids and communities. And so this is the start of our kids exploring the importance of that and realizing that the selection of that name actually is pretty profound in their own story of our community, but also in the story of Indigenous people in our, in our community. I claim Manitou and Indishnikas, Mapwadu Adem, Napani Undayon. I am Anishinaabe Kwe, and along with the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe people, I welcome you to this gathering. We all have spirits that walk with us. They're our helpers. They're the ones who remind us of who we are and the things that we need to do. And so when we sound the drum like this, all of those spirits perk up their ears and they say something's going to happen. And they know the sound of the drum. So they get ready too to be our helpers. Yeah. 
This has captured for us and what it will do for our community is give us a sense of where we are right now uh, because we have big hopes for our school right and so uh, yeah. that that notion of anything is possible is is not a t-shirt slogan it's a belief statement it's what we believe about our kids and so um, having a moment where we share that and it captures that belief um, in video form uh, is something that we'll share broadly with our school community and with the indigenous community because they were our partners as well okay that's great that's a wrap. Okay. Yeah. Anything yeah. is possible. Anything at all. If I believe and you believe, then we can do it all. Anything is possible. Just you wait and see. Anything is possible. It starts with you and me. Right here. Someone says, no way! Someone else is full of doubt every single day. But we can make a window where there used to be a wall. Anything is possible, anything at all. Anything at all. We are ten feet tall. Anything at all. We are ten feet tall. Anything is possible. Anything is possible, it starts with you and me. Anything is possible, just you wait and see. Anything is possible. Woo! Nicely done, everyone. Nicely done. We thank you, great creator, for this day that you've made. We thank you for the wind that blows. We thank you for the sun and the sky and the moon and all the things that you've created. Thank you for watching over us. I hope. I hope. Miigwech.